G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. In this video we're looking at the topic for older students of simplifying fractions. So the worksheets that go with the video come from a book called Bring It On um, Fractions and it's aimed at students roughly in grade 5, year 5 or year 6 although we should say that as the topics become more advanced we're probably going to, we are probably going to need more differentiation. So some students in those grades won't actually be ready for the more advanced topics at that level. That's just a, a feature of students falling behind as we go through the curriculum. So anyway, we're looking at simplifying fractions. I've got these magnetic models again to illustrate the uh, recommended strategies and so on. So we're going to uh, start with a fraction. Let's start with the fraction 9 twelfths. And before we go any further, I'm going to just point out that we want students to read this as 9 twelfths, not 9 over 12. I've noticed that some young people today like to just read the two numbers like they're spelling a word out. So instead of cat, it's like saying this is a C-A-T. It, it's no help to anybody. And we're not trying to simplify the way we say the fraction, rather the reverse, we need to be able to read the fraction correctly um, and it's correctly known as 9 twelfths. Now that does a couple of things, it, it is the correct way to name the fraction but it emphasizes the values and the difference between them. So the 9 is a counting number, how many twelfths do we have? We have 9 twelfths and we could count in twelfths, 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, dot 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 up to nine twelfths and the twelve part tells us the name of the fraction which of course is what the word denominator means it names the fraction they're called twelfths so don't want to belabor the point too much but I think that is really important and I have noticed the trend so we're going to pose this question to our students nine twelfths equals what and we want our students to find a new fraction now we would do that in an equivalent fraction exercise and of course there's an infinite number of answers so we can make up all sorts of fractions that are equal to 9 twelfths but in this particular one we're looking for a simpler fraction simpler meaning the numbers are smaller now as the students are learning about fractions they will hopefully have noticed or will have been um, had it pointed out to them that the fractions come in different sizes and that the sizes relate in some way to the denominators themselves. So this has the denominator 8, this is the denominator 4. 4 is a smaller number than 8, but the fraction is bigger. And then of course if I put these in order, we have 12, so that's an even bigger number, but an even smaller fraction. So students should be able to see there is a, an inverse relationship, they don't have to know those words, between the size of the denominator and the size of the piece. So in other words, as the numbers get bigger, the fractions become smaller. So with that said, in this context, we want our students to find a fraction that uses smaller numbers. So we have 9 twelfths, we're trying to make a new fraction, an equivalent fraction, an equal fraction, that uses smaller numbers. Now, of course, the, the answer is going to be obvious, um, because there's only a certain number of uh, fraction models that will show um, the various options that are there. We could actually make one with eighths, but if we... I'm not, not, to be honest, I'm not sure how to deal with that because when we use the, the standard process for doing this, we're not going to get to eighths. I think we could explore the space, let's say that. So we could explore this and say, look, there's a fraction that's the same, here's another one that's the same. Could we make one out of halves? No, we couldn't. Could we make one out of thirds? No, we can't get one that's the right size. So we've got three that are um, equivalent, they're the same size. Um, but we're not going to use the eighths. Um, simply because the numerical method won't lead us there. So let's uh, move along. So we have 9 twelfths, we can see there's 3 quarters, so um, I said before we're not using these as calculating devices but as exploration devices. So at this level I'm happy to say what did you find out, what are the fractions that you found that are the same, and uh, the students will see that there's three quarters. Maybe I would skip the eighths. I'm trying to work out what to do with that. I think we might just remove the eighths and, and not use them so as not to confuse the students in the process. 
Okay, so so far so good. We've found that nine twelfths is the same as three quarters. We can put them on top of each other. We can prove that we're right there. But why? Why are they the same? And that is, of course, the most interesting question. It's, it's not a matter of can you find the answer, let's move on to the next question. But can you understand the answer? Do you know why these two fractions are actually the same? And as we move on, could we find a method to find that? So we could just look at one quarter and a number of twelfths and of course see that that is equal to three twelfths and ask the students what they notice. What's the relationship here? How can we understand this process? So we would want them to see that there are three twelfths that's the same as a quarter and oh look there's a relationship between the four and the twelve. So if we have one quarter equals three twelfths and that's an idea that the students could understand. We could then say what do you notice about all those numbers? And I think it won't be too difficult for them to see that if we multiply that by 3, the, the numbers on the right hand side are 3 times, both of them are, than the numbers on the left. And if we look at the fraction pieces we can see that is so, we can see why that is so. Okay, because these three are the same size as the quarter and of course if you had 12 in the total here and 4 in the total there then, you know, there's a relationship there of 3 is to 1. And we can see again that these three are the same size as those, that, that quarter, these three, that, that quarter and, and so on. So, so far so good. We've allowed our students to discover the answer. We've asked them to explain the answer. The last thing we want to do is to see if we could do this without the models. Well, let me just make a bit of space here and say what can we see about this question and how could we come up with a numerical or um, a arithmetic method for finding the simplified fraction. And so obviously the standard method is staring everybody in the face about now um, and we can see this is going to be dividing by 3 and this is going to be dividing by 3. But we can link all of this to the pieces and to the models and to the way the students um, have investigated it. Um, and of course I should add, if you didn't have the magnetic models, I'm enjoying using these because I've got them here, um, but if I didn't have them I'd draw pictures and you know there are other ways of getting there. So we, we're not jumping to this algorithm straight away, but we're helping the students see why it makes sense and see how they can understand this. This is so important and you can see I spent ages in this video just looking at this one question. I would do this with students. You know, maybe do one question the whole lesson, maybe, if it takes that much to do all the exploring and the talking and the, you know, the discovering and so on. Far better that than to do a whole page full where the students are really not understanding at all, and just following some uh, mindless process. So there is quite a lot involved here. We want to help our students to understand it before they start doing the worksheet. So when the, once they get to there, we want them to be thinking as they do it. So um, if you're a homeschooler, I would recommend that you sit with the child and say, tell me about this question and how do you work out that one? And you know, can you do this one in your head? And really ask them to think about the meanings of the numbers and the conceptual basis for the method rather than just can you follow the method, which is a purely mechanical way of doing it. Okay, I've gone a bit long in this video. I hope it's been useful and I look forward to talking to you next week.